Oh, it's recording. What's up? Hey everyone, Stefan here. I hope you're doing well. So yet another episode where it's not about me, but about someone who I totally admire. No, for about four years, there was a time when we talked nearly on a daily basis and we had so many fun and interesting conversations, not just about photography, but life itself and ideas and 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 principles of creation and all those deep and meaningful things. But most of all, and I now bang into microphone, that's how excited I am and how, how unprofessional I am with these sort of things. Anyway, oh, what can I say? What's up, Isaac? What's up? Oh my gosh, it's been a while, Stefan. Oh my goodness. It's been, um, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. You're constantly on my feed because you're constantly on Instagram and you know, you know me, I'm a fanboy, right? I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm a fanboy. I, I love seeing other people succeed and, um, you know, watching your stuff all the time. Always, always slightly jealous. Just a, just a tiny little bit. No, don't be jealous. Oh, why are you jealous? Oh my because goodness. you're so, your stuff is so, so good. But <laughs> now if someone, someone lived under a rock for the last 30 years and doesn't know who you are or what you're doing in an elevator pitch, 30 seconds, how would you, how would you introduce yourself? Oh, I don't usually introduce. <laughs> Uh, I usually just, you know, talk about other things except for me. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I hate talking about myself. <laughs> uh, I I mean, I would just say I'm a creative. I do a lot of things and I love art. I, that's, that's pretty much it, you know. That's slightly a, underselling yourself. You're actually three things. One of them that you never actually mention. Um, of course, you're you're a damn bloody good photographer. You work in film as well, but you're also a pretty darn good educator. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, uh, I think that's 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 one of my goals is to help others because I remember when I was starting. Uh, I, I think I told you this before. When I was starting, nobody helped me out, you know, and. Um, one of the things that I promised myself was, you know what? I will never be that guy who turns away from people that need help. So I, I always, you know, I'm an advocate of teaching. I'm an advocate of like trying to help anybody grow in their field. And I love people succeeding. I just, I just do. And I think that's, that's the most, uh, that's the thing that I take away from the most is that when you succeed or when somebody succeeds it just brightens my day it's like oh my god you're like doing whatever you love doing and you're doing it because it's your passion you know and i i love just teaching that is such a common thread with all all the people who truly made it and then we truly made it like found their own way, found their style, their looks, etc. Um, when these people find pleasure in helping other people, you rem remember when when you and I started? Uh, I started probably about thirty years before you, unfortunately, as you can tell by the lack of hair. But <laughs> I'm getting there. Look. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. You're like a full set of hair and then you hide it under the if yeah. I sh I should be wearing the cap. That's that's what what it's about. But when I started there was nobody that helped at all. Mm. There was no YouTube, there was no Instagram, there was no social media at all. And I had to be in the library going through Richard Avedon's books and and you know pick up things now we're bombarded by by all of that and you were lucky if you found some way uh into a studio as an assistant or something now you can just go on youtube you find an answer to everything some good some bad 
but it's all there. Now it's a question, what do people do with it? But there's still that something that is missing. And that is that one-on-one -on -one person. And, and I know you and I, we talked about this many years ago. We still need other people to look mm -hmm. at it from time to time. There's always this one extra step until we yeah. drop dead. Yeah, there is. Um, I think as a creative, and I, I find myself doing this a lot, is you get you get in a zone where you don't see other things that other people see, mm. you know, and that's why you need other people to look at your work because you, I mean, we're humans, we make mistakes, we miss things and, you, you know. You make mistakes? Since when? Oh yeah, all since, the time. <laughs> since when do you make mistakes? Come on. I make a lot of mistakes from falling off a ladder, from like not bringing a battery on set. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I miss a I like I am I am one of those clumsy guys where, you know, I drop my camera, I crack my lens, and it's just yeah, it's, it's good times. <laughs> but going going back to what I said is is you know, we we tend to, you know, focus on things that we like to do or we like to see, then it comes out to where we forget to look at other things. That's why it's very important to, you know, reach out to a colleague or reach out to a professional and say, hey, do you mind giving me a second eye on this? Or do you mind looking at this in a different perspective? Because you, we, we don't see it. You know, we, we need to step back from time to time. How often has it happened to you that you're so focused on the eyes and the expression of someone that you totally forgot that uh, or didn't realize that half of the dress comes undone? Oh, or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all the time, all the time. Oh, my gosh. It's this is just, you know, sometimes you focus on the things that you love the most to the point where you forget the other things that matter to mm. other people. So it's 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 a learning curve, but now I'm in a, a point where I'm working with a bunch of teams, like I'm working with a bunch of people that will call me out on things that I haven't seen, you know? Mm. So if I'm like the, the world famous tap on the shoulder from the makeup artist. Tap on the shoulder, like saying, hey, you, you forgot this, or did you want me to do this instead? Uh, I'm like, oh yeah, good eye, good eye, good call. <laughs> I didn't see that, but yeah, thank you for noticing. <laughs> well, especially now that you're moving more into film, I think you have yeah. to be also a little bit, I guess, more frame thinking while in photography you're more center thinking yeah uh i find that when when i'm in in the studio purely photographing someone mm. i know I, i i can remove things i can but once it's film i have to really do the 360 frame check yeah because rotoscoping things out is a very different story than in in photoshop just you know replacing something so uh, i think working in film or video in film yeah it really changes you have to think widescreen again mm. rather than honing in don't you think yeah and uh i had to learn the hard way because in film i mean going back to photography like you said you're able to kind of uh, do things in your head you know like add things here add things there And you kind of like have to paint the picture before you take the picture. But in film, it's like you're working with a bunch of amazing talents, right? That, you know, you forget that you're not a one man army. You have a whole crew working together to make a film. So I remember when I, I started, um, you know, shooting my commercials or shooting my music video, I would fix the lights or I would, you know, frame the camera and I would do this and do that. And uh, I came to find out the hard way that people have certain jobs, you know, like director of photography handles the cameras, you know, or grip, they handle the lighting. So I, I, I kind of have to get out of my shell and just step back a bit because 
I'm I'm so used to doing it all on my own that I have to like just pull back and say, okay, I I have to stop doing that, you know. And it's it's amazing to have a team that could back you up in other things and you focusing on you know the talent, making sure that they you know they act right or they perform right and whatever it is, right? Absolutely. But the beautiful thing about teams is the amount of times that I might not have the, the energy or I just come from from a, a, a big meeting with a client and now I'm meant to be the clown in the studio. I really need that group of people that no matter what builds each other up, not just mm-hmm. bringing all of them, bringing their own talents or jobs, but the humanity Someone can be down, someone can be completely, someone walks in with, with, with coffee. I didn't order coffee, but they felt that, okay, Stefan does, Stefan today doesn't really bring it. I think he needs a triple express. And they disappear for 10, 15 minutes. They come back with a big cup of coffee and said, I think you need that. Just that smile changes the rest of the photo shoot. It does. It does. I mean, the energy that people bring on set is contagious you know so that's why it's very important not to have a negative person on set <laughs> so how do you pick people then to work with you oh it's, do you uh, have do you have like a questionnaire and the first question is uh, how do you say hello and if it's not what's up then they're not qualified no it's it's hard it took me a long time to get the right people on set you know it took like a lot of uh you know, give or take our challenges to to get the right people because, you know, there are times where I hire the wrong people. I mean, there was this one guy that I hired. I'm not going to mention any names, but... Wasn't me. When we were, Wasn't me. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> when we were rolling, you know, it's quiet on set and quiet on set means <laughs> don't do anything. And this guy literally just started walking around and you can hear his footsteps and I'm like looking at him and he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then he was starting to take pictures like behind the scene photos and his camera had shutters. It was like, and I was like, oh my gosh, we can't have that. So it took it took a while to get the right team. And then once you get the right team, it's it's kind of like a flow mm. and it feels good when it has that flow. You know, it's like you don't even have to mention anything and that person knows what you need or what you want on set and they'll do it without asking. And it's it's nice to have that. Yeah. The longer you work together, they start to know these sort of things. So your work, it's very moody, very personal. It has sort of a dark, darkish color tone to it, but it's it's very inviting. So it, it's, it really invites to meet that person that you photograph. So yeah. that is very different than your persona, which is <laughs> bubbly and out there and friendly and yay! And... Having the team that actually understands this whole process and yeah. over time totally knows when you say, oh, I need a little bit more light on the left shoulder. That doesn't mean a 4K to illuminate the room. It means a kiss of light on that shoulder. Like just, yeah, like an angel kiss, you know, like uh, just like a tiny bit. A f- <laughs> but you a know feather, what I mean. A feather just <laughs> dropping feather. gently. Oh, shimmer me with the light. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I call it the kiss of light. When the I want, kiss. Kiss. if I want that 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 tiny little bit of rim, you know, that tiny little, I call it like a kiss of light. And then oh. they go and light it up, and and measure it in. And I shoot at f8, and the light is at f8. I'm like, that's not a kiss. That that's a floodlight. I need a kiss. <laughs> just a kiss, just a kiss. <laughs> Not like a Kino flow, you know, Ari lights and all that stuff. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
just quickly interrupting the official programming or the conversation with Isaac. I'm just adding some music at the moment and realized even though for him and myself, retouching is super important, yet we didn't actually touch on it. So I want to say thank you to Retouch for me for helping me create these episodes, but even more so for creating those amazing plugins, which save me so much time on a daily basis. Now, I know you want to hear what Isaac has to say, so I'll make this short. Just for you, in the links below, you will find two, or in the description below, you will find two links. Number one, I created some dedicated videos where I show you how I use these plugins on a daily basis and how much time they cre uh, they save me to create the most incredible results. And then there's a second link. You can go there, download the demo, try it out for yourself. And if you like it, use that link to save some money. Why pay full if you can save some money? Hey, we're all human. We all have to look after our dollars. Now, back to Isaac. So I I explained how I see your your work. Was I close or or would you see it differently? Uh yeah, yeah you are. I mean it is it is dark and moody and I think that's just because I love focusing on emotions mm -hmm. and I love I love like sad things you know i'm like a big drama guy like <laughs> i watch drama all the time i love watching drama you know from scorsese to fincher anything that has drama on it i am in <laughs> <laughs> but i i think that's just because my uh, my personality is yeah yeah you're right i am more bubbly in person I'm more bubbly when you do talk to me, but it, it's not the same as what I relay on film. I don't know. It's so interesting. <laughs> I have a theory, though. I, yeah. I, what is it? Well, my theory is because I'm I'm the the entertainer in the studio, right? I yeah. I want to make sure that everybody is happy, that everybody has a smile on their face. I always say that there's three things that I expect from a model. A, that they're on time. Number two, that they're having a bloody good time. And on the way out, I want to get a high five. Right? Okay. That means that the high five proves that I behaved myself and they had a good time. And, and yeah. in between, I can make sure that they're comfortable. And I think the way you deal with people, I, I just... I can only go by the way you deal with me, but um, you invite me to be honest because you are this open, this 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 approachable person, which gives me the permission to show all of me, which then I believe reflects in your photo. So you like you say you like drama. How do you get the drama or the personality out of someone? only Ooh. by creating a comfort blanket. You need to be on a level where they feel completely comfortable to let go. And that comes with your personality. I think that makes sense. I never thought about that, but yeah, that makes that sense. A lot of sense, dude. Stefan, uh, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, you're right. Like just having my personality having everybody else be comfortable with it. I think it just relates right. <laughs> you give them permission to be themselves. Yeah, I do. I think it's it's the best feeling, right? If you're yourself, I mean, you get the guard down. You like let down the guard, you know? You don't have that wall to kind of be on defensive mode, you know? It feels like you could, you're able to be more creative when your guard is down. So how do you do that? So Ooh. if if I'm okay, so so hi hi, I'm Johnny. Uh, I just bought a camera. I want to be uh, create images just like you. So how do I do this? <laughs> you know, um, let's let's talk about photography, right? Uh, in photography, you know, I tend to get to know that person first. 
And then once I get to know that person on the day of the shoot, I usually, I usually put on some sad music, sad music like Adele or uh, Sam Smith or Christina Perry, you know, like breaking those hearts into pieces. And then from there, the music is going on, but the conversation is more flowy. So I, uh, I tend to ask about, you know, life situations, uh, your childhood, you know, your journey in life. How did you get uh, from, from wherever you started to here? Um, and then I hit them up with uh, the main questions, which is like, what is the lowest point in your life? Or what are the things that happened, you know, that is tragic in your life, you know? And that's when people start opening up. And then we get into conversations where, you know, I don't even know how it got there, but it's just hearing the stories of everybody is so unique and interesting to the point where I get sucked in to the storyteller. And then from there, of course, People tend to cry, people tend to, you know, laugh, people tend to like go back to the past and kind of relive that moment. And I capture those images. I kid you not, Stefan, I, if you look at my portfolio and you pick an image, I can pinpoint the actual conversation that we're having because it was it's so ingrained in my head on how we had that shoot. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just it's a deep conversation of humanity basically. And then from there of course I ended up I ended it with a good note uh with questions like, you know, um all the success that you have in the past, are you satisfied with with where you are now or you know, uh how did you get to uh to that moment to the happiness that you're uh, that you're experiencing now. And then from there, I feel like everybody tells me at the end, it feels like a therapeutic moment because it they never open up like that ever before. And then when they see the images, they're like, oh, wow. I remember what I was talking about when you captured this. Mm. And it's just, it's, it's so, um, it's like a story. It's like a mini diary for me. And that's what I that's what I take on my portraits are mini diaries. Does that make sense? Oh, that makes perfect sense. What you're yeah. saying is what I think I see in those pictures is that there is more than a color palette or a, a certain lighting pattern or a certain angle. What I see is, I guess mentally a, 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 di a dimension to those pictures where I feel like I get to know that person a little bit, even though I never spoken to that person. There's something personal. That's why I said dark, moody, but personal. That's, and so for you, of course, there's this whole back story to it, which I, as a viewer, if I will walk into a gallery and see your images, I don't have that backstory but somehow i still see it it relays on on camera i mean the emotions that they give are genuine emotions you know and they you know some of them never actually gave those emotions ever before on camera mm. because they never talked about those situations and yeah you're right when you do see the image you use you feel some sort of emotions that that tells a story somehow, but you don't really get it, but you do. You know, does that make sense? Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, it's there, but ah, oh, it's just so, ah, oh. it's the natural poses is what I go for. The natural poses. So if they're going to look off camera, capture that image, and it's that certain look, you can tell a person to not look at the camera and you'll get a different, you know, outcome as opposed to 
getting that serious moment where they're not even thinking about the photography. They're thinking about past experiences. And that expression is just, I, I kid you not, it happens in a, in a, a flick of a finger where that emotions come in and it goes out. Come in, goes out. It's like, oh wow, capturing that moment. It's like my, oh, it's like capturing a Pokemon. <laughs> well, I tell my subjects usually that we have to give magic a chance. For me, it's all comedy show. I'm I'm all all like stupid and, and, and um, <laughs> totally overposer in the studio and all that kind of. You're you're like the drama version. I'm the stand-up comedy version of it, but it produces similar results. Funny enough. Uh, yeah, it's letting people, it, allowing people to let the guard down, like you said before. Yeah, and I think we we gravitate to what we know, right? So when we have that urge to be a comic or be dramatic, uh, we already know or trained ourselves to know how to capture that moment, enable for us to get the results that we need. You know, and it's it's that's why everybody is so different. Even if even if I teach my way of style or my way of shooting, people will just come up with their own results mm. in in a way. That's why I'm not afraid to tell everybody what my lighting setup is or, you know, how I got, you know, this this um, subject to pose like this. It's like. It's because nobody can mimic it. Everybody is going to come up with a different result. You know, everybody has a different personality. So that that way they're going to they're going to just approach it in a different way that you would. You can't you can't copy anybody. You just got to you, you know what I always tell myself is it's an inspiration instead of uh, saying that it's a copy. You got inspired by either that person or that person and you bring it to your work and you do your own thing, you know? Whoever says that they are not inspired or influenced by other people's work, they must be walking blind through the world. Here is a good idea. You should find out more about this insanely talented person and you should go into the description below click on those links on his website and on his Instagram on the website even more so because uh, I I really like now I'm, I'm looking at you again rather than the viewer that I really like those projects that you've been doing um, not just I mean your portraits you know I'm a big fan uh, but those I, I now forgot what what you called it, but you know, all with the with the sign in their hands, all those portraits oh, that you have. Oh, project. Yeah, that yeah. that is awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. That that happened actually during the pandemic. Okay. You know, so uh, I don't know if we have time, but story about that is that um, during the pandemic, pandemic hit, I lost every single client that I had, you know, and everything that I was looking at uh, on TV or in the news was everything was negative. So I, I contacted one of my friends and I said, hey, do you want to do a project with me? And he goes, yeah, whatever you want to do. I'm so down. I go, I'm going to FaceTime you and I want you to grab a piece of paper and I want you to write something that you want to relay to the world. And then he said, okay. And then I'll capture the images through FaceTime and then I'll just put it on my website or whatever. So he wrote down, uh, I miss uh, having, I miss going to the diner with my parents, right? And then the next person, I miss getting a haircut. Uh, the next person was, I miss going to the mall and shopping to the point where uh, I started out with 20 people and it became over 300 people. And I was literally just FaceTiming people left and right, shooting them on my phone. And then it got to TMZ, it got to like Huffington Post, TMZ, 
and it just like spread out like wildfire uh, saying that, you know, this photographer was doing this project throughout the pandemic and it just brought up everybody in a positive way. And I love that project because it just, you know, not only did it get me a lot of clients after, you know, the pandemic, but uh, I, I've got, I've gotten a reach out to like so many different people saying that, you know, those messages that I've read touched my life in a very positive way and I can't stop reading it. And it was just so, so inspiring to like, not only to me, but to many people as well. And I love that project. That was like, just off the cuff. I wanted to do something real quick to just change my mood. And then that's where it ended up when, you know? It didn't end up real quick. It was a little it, bit more than just Yeah, it was, it was a quick. long, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty, it's a good project that I've cherished. Uh, ever since then, uh, I love that project. And the the amount of people that I've FaceTimed, um, it's just so touching hearing their stories. Because I would talk to them first, and then I would say, okay, what do you have in your piece of paper? Oh, okay, that's amazing. Let me capture that. And then uh, it just, it, it, it became like my, my to-dos, my daily my daily to-dos uh, throughout the pandemic. And it was fun. I loved it. I, I think there's two things in there which which in, I think people should take away from it. Number one is that if you have an idea, be it the most glorious idea or just a fart that sort of touches your upper inches, the only bad project is the one that you don't try. It's, I love that. It, it's, it's just that simple because we all are very, very good. Every single professional I talked to in the last 40 years, they all have one thing in common. We are exceptionally good at messing things up. We are brilliant at messing things up, leaving things behind, not finishing projects. Um, I don't know, having an idea, starting it, then leaving it on the side, making mistakes, etc. But in between all of those, there are some glorious outcomes. Some by mistakes, some, some planned. But we only make those mistakes and experience those glorious moments because we give it a go. That's one yes. thing. And, and every single time I see something like that, I just go, yes, baby, thank you so much. And and that is a project that I looked at and I thought, this is so cool. But also because of the second thing, and I don't want to sound like a preacher here, even though I'm the elder, um, it's, it's to reach out, to reach out to yeah. people. And during pandemic, everybody started to talk about mental health and, and, and reaching out. But the right. pandemic is past. But people who need to hear or uh, smile or, or, or see, see you care, they're still out there. So yeah. for the fact that, I mean, we haven't talked in two or three years, I think. Yeah, probably. it's been a while. Yeah. And, but you never, you never left my brain. You were sitting up here and quite often, just out of nowhere, I'm thinking, I need an Isaac right now to, or whatever, right? So, um, and and I'm reaching out, and yeah. and I do this with 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 uh, with some people that just out of nowhere I have this feeling like I need to say hello, and you put those, those two things together into a project that a gave you some clients back, which is awesome, but I bet you would be just as happy if you would just make those 300 people happy. Yes. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Nothing can, no amount of money can ever replace the conversations that I had and the connections that I had with people throughout that time. It's just amazing. I don't know what this, this proverb is, but if you do something for love, the money will find its way. But if you do, yeah. if you do things for money, 
you will chase it forever. The, the other proverb, uh, not proverb, but a saying that I heard from uh, a good friend of mine who is a brilliant public speaker. He says, the city of perfection doesn't exist, but the drive there is amazing. That's a good one. That is amazing, That's right? Yeah, the I city, love that one. The city of perfection does not exist, but the drive ah. there is amazing. And I think... This is what you do. This is what I try to do. I always try to reach for perfection, knowing that it doesn't exist. But it keeps me learning. It keeps me making those mistakes. It keeps me coming up with brain fart ideas that sometimes work out and sometimes not. And if you want to see you at home watching this or on the bus or wherever you watch this, if you want to see some of those ideas, go to Isaac's website. Trust me, click on, click around, not just his beautiful portraits, but look at the other things that he's doing, also his personal projects. And you will end up, just like I said uh, an hour ago, you will be just as much a fanboy as I am. How is that for a closing? That's amazing. You're always great at you're great at this. <laughs> Stefan, oh, I miss behind the lens. <laughs> Me too. Well, what do we learn from all of this? Well, well, for some people are more talented than others. We just have to get over this. This is just how it is. You know, it hurts. But um, <laughs> as we progress, we might find those those things. But the most important part is to go for those ideas. Just like Isaac said, I had this idea and I actually put it in action. So all I can leave you with is this one thing. If you don't start, you will never get anywhere. So start it. Maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't. But if you give it a chance, you're always already half on the way. Until then, next week. I don't know who I talk to next week, but we'll figure that one out. For now, I say thank you for watching and go out and create something awesome. All right, are we ready? <laughs>